Hello everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Myself, Dr. Jamuna, heading clinical operations and business development at QR Health. I welcome you all for today's webinar session on in vitro fertilization, unveiling the science, myths, and realities of IVF. Our guest speaker for today is Dr. Rashmi, a renowned gynecologist and infertility specialist in Bangalore. Firstly, for those who do not know about our company, QR Health, I would like to give a brief introduction. Cure Health is a conversational AI company delivering personalized care at scale. At Cure Health, our vision is to save life super proactively. Our mission is to improve patient quality of care, patient safety, patient care adherence, and patient awareness. Our user-friendly app, Cure Book, has more than 3,500 care plans and diet plans under 30 different health categories. These plans will help to improve patients' health condition by monitoring their vitals, symptoms, everyday lifestyle management activities, which are specific to disease condition. We have our care coordinators who are expert nurses. They'll be calling and speaking to the patients on a regular basis and keeping a track on their vital symptoms and their medication and diet patterns. Till date, we have served more than 20,000 patients with more than 25,000 plant subscriptions. We have received positive feedbacks from more than 200 patients till date. So audience, before we start today's webinar, I would like to introduce you to our guest speaker. She is an experienced gynecologist and infertility specialist in Bangalore. With over 20 years of experience, she has made significant contributions to the field of gynecology and infertility treatment. She completed her MBBS at MS Ramaya Medical College, Bangalore in the year 2000. She pursued her DGO from GJ Medical College, Davankari in 2006. And she completed her uh, fellowship in gynec endoscopy uh, from Dr. Kamini Rao Hospital, Bangalore in 2012. She is a member of Bangalore Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology, member of Federation of Obstetric and Gynecological Societies of India, and also the Indian Society for Assisted Reproduction. Her extensive experience and affiliations in the medical field reflect her dedication to providing compassionate and high quality care to her patients. We are very much honored to have you with us today, Dr. Rashmi. Thank you, Dr. Jemna. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I thank the Cure Health for giving me this opportunity for a talk. It's our pleasure, Doctor. So I would like to also inform to all our viewers that you can type your questions in the comment section. And these questions will be answered at the end of the webinar during the Q&A session conducted by Dr. Isha. So let's begin our webinar session on IVF. In vitro fertilization stands as an exceptional medical achievement that has transformed the field of reproductive medicine, offering a ray of hope to countless couples who are facing infertility challenges. It re represents a remarkable union of science, technology, and human determination, enabling people who might otherwise struggle to conceive and fulfill their dreams of parenthood. Having a baby, and achieving family completeness is one of the strongest desires for many couples in our society, which leads them to explore various methods of assisted reproductive treatments. IVF has come a long way since its inception in the late 20th century, with advancements in assisted reproductive technologies becoming a highly effective and widely accessible method for overcoming various infertility issues. Research showed that worldwide, 8 million IVF children have been born and over 2.5 million cycles are being performed every year. This results in around 5 lakh deliveries annually. But the journey through IVF is a complex and emotional one, filled with anticipation, hope, and sometimes moments of uncertainty. This webinar unveils the science behind in vitro fertilization while dispelling the myths 
and shedding light on this remarkable reproductive technology. So, Dr. Rashmi, please enlighten, enlighten our audience about in vitro fertilization procedures and the common motivations that lead to couples to undergo IVF. Now, what do I mean by in vitro? Something which is done in the lab. It's artificial. It is done in vitro means in lab. In vivo means what is happening in our process, in our body process. So the same thing, what is happening in vivo, which is replicated in the lab is called as in vitro. In vitro fertilization. Fertilization means the union of the gametes, that is the egg and the sperm. This gives the word IVF. Now, I, there is something called as ICSI also. Okay? One step ahead. I mean, some people get confused. What is IVF? What is ICSI? It is both one and the same. The IVF or the ICSI is the same. What do I mean by ICSI? It is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. That is, you hold the egg in the, uh, in the petri dish and inject the sperm manually to each of the egg in order to get a fertilized, that is the embryo. So both of it is the uh, same thing, in, whether it's IVF or ICSI, but it is an uh, artificial technique of reproduction. And uh, uh, what was the next question? What pushes the couple for IVF? Yes, yes. there is some um, uh, some uh, untoward uh, sequence. That is, there is, it's not correctable factors. There are correctable, uncorrectable factors. Prolonged uh, marriage, multiple IUI fail, or severe male factors. There, there is the count is extremely low, or poor egg reserve, where the egg producing capacity of the wife is less. So these are the common factors where IVF is the uh, solution for these couples. So these are the factors which pushes them for IVF. So according to World Health Organization, around one in six uh, couples have difficulties in conceiving. They often seek medical advice and treatment. What are the factors that are contributing to this rising incidence of infertility in recent times? And how do the societal lifestyle and as well as medical changes influence this trend, Dr. There are both male factors, the female factors, and unexplained factors. For some reasons, we don't know the factors, uh, what is the reason also. But most of them, their factors lies both in the couple, whether it is male or females. So whenever if there is a 100 couple who doesn't be able to, means there is a difficulty in conception, 30% will fall in the female factor, 30% fall in the men factor, and 40%, the rest 40%, we don't know what is the cause at all. The first place, we don't know the reason at all. Now, why is there so many IVF center coming up? Why is there the so many infertile couple uh, booming? Land? Because of the main is the uh, sedentary lifestyle and the females working over here. There are, uh, since earlier, the females were intended to have a child look after the house. But now the females work in par with men uh, to earn the livelihood or to be in the profession, career and all. Those adds up to sedentary lifestyle, stressful factors, where the female is out out of the her natural process of getting means for getting a getting a child and she is in par with the men so these things adds up to the stress and all this leading and the habits the food habits the dietary lifestyles and the pollution of the environment all this put together has made uh, the reason for uh, increasing number of fertile, infertile couples Okay, so IVF procedure, how, how is it usually recommended, doctor? And what are the steps involved uh, when a couple decide on taking up IVF treatment? First, what is the reason for the IVF? There should be a, a strong reason for uh, to go for IVF. Since there is some factors in men which is not correctable at all. There is a severe low sperm quality or a severe low sperm volume count. These are the factors which pushes, which where the IVF is recommended. Or there is something called as there is an ovulation where there is PCO, they are not responding to any of the drugs. Or other extreme where there is very low reserve, where we cannot wait for the couple to have conceived naturally because most of them get um, in the in the metro cities, the uh, pregnancy, age of marriage, everything gets delayed. So the egg reserve will be at, at stake. So when there is, uh, when there is, not enough time for the couple uh, to conceive because the female is already at 35 plus and all. So such patients, we push it for IVF. So that in that in during that procedure, what happens? Uh, usually we start the uh, treatment on the second or third day of the cy uh, cycle of the female and the injection for the egg to grow, we, uh, we, uh, we give it around 10 to 12 days. Retrieve those oocytes. We uh, monitor the growth of the follicles by scan. Retrieve 
leave those follicles when it is ready, which is usually on the 14th, 13th or 14th day under sedation. And in this lab, we collect the husband, the partner's sperm, inject it in the lab and grow it over there for the next five days to make it into an embryo and uh, freeze it off. And usually we freeze those embryos and transfer later date after she gets two or more cycles, the next two cycles. So it is generally three months procedure where the first 15 days of the cycle where we collect the oocyte and form the embryos and the transfer will happen after two months. That takes another 15 days to prepare the endometrium for transfer. Okay, 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 doctor. So uh, can you please explain the available options within assisted reproductive technologies that are new uh, 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 and also which are now accessible for couples seeking fertility assistance? And how, how is that uh, different from IVF? And why is IVF considered as very unique among all other uh, tri treatment procedures? There are so many methods of conception. Apart from natural conception, when there is little difficulty in conceiving, there's so many, see, not everybody, all the couples need IVF. There are, suppose there are 100 couples, there is difficulty in conceiving. Most of them, most of them, by ninety percent of them, they get uh, they they'll be con uh, they'll be getting their child children pregnancy by non normal method. Only the ten percent of them is the one who requires the real IVF. Sometimes the couple. Uh, they uh, they will be not knowing that they will not be having the knowledge of what is the ovulation time, what is the, what is the ovulation period cycles, and uh, where uh, where is the uh, uh, lag? Where is the uh, where exactly is the lag happening, or whether there is any anovulation factor where the egg is not growing? So we need some medicines to make the egg grow, when to unite, when to have an intercourse. All this knowledge with those things, only most of them will conceive. But some factors, are, there's some male factor where the motility is an issue, the sperm doesn't have the capacity to go or else go into the tube. That time we do uh, IUI, we call it as intrauterine semen insemination, where we take the uh, male partner's sperm, wash it, select the motile sperm and in, uh, introduce into the cavity. And th that means into the uterus when the ovulation, we monitor the ovulation, when the ovulation happens, this uh, in IUI, that is the uh, intrauterine insemination is done. So most of them, they conceive with these uh, uh, minor procedures. Only is the 10% uh, of them which requires a higher end treatment like IVF fixing. And also IVF is often seen as a treatment used when other infertility interventions have been exhausted or proven as ineffective. Yes, yes. Is this yes. true? Is yes, true? that is IVF is the ultimate last resort. See, if at all she is not conceiving by regular ovulation induction, even though if the follicle is growing, or follicle is rupturing, ovulation is happening, there is no male factor, she is not able to conceive. Or many cycles of IUI where the couple failed to achieve pregnancy. So there are some tubal factors. There is some fallopian tube which is damaged because of any previous infection, vaginal infection or tuberculosis, pelvic tuberculosis, where the tube is totally damaged, where the natural mode of conception is not possible because the fallopian tube is damaged or there is any blockage in the tube. So such uh, uh, couples, there's no other option other than going for IV. So uh, when a couple is deciding on taking up an uh, IVF, so what are the uh, other options they would have already tried and they would have taken decision to uh, go? That's, what I, said. That's what I said. Uh, it is a uh, multiple cycles of ovulation induction, making a ovulation happening, trying naturally with ovulation induction drugs, multiple cycles of IUI where intrauterine insemination has been done several times. Still, the pregnancy is not happening. Such patient or severe male factor where there is a quality of the sperm is at stake, there is a totally abnormal sperm or very, very low count. Such patients, uh, IVF is the only option available. And this is when all this result, uh, resort has been exhausted and there are, IVF is a boon for such couples. And also, doctor, could you please explain the factors that influence IVF success rates Many couples are skeptical about achieving success in their initial attempts. See, I tell all my patients there are only two factors which counts for IVF success. I say it as double E, good endometrium, good embryo. 
So for implantation, we need a good endometrium that is a lining of inside the uterus where the embryo is instilled inside the uterus. So it should be an excellent endometrium where we monitor by scan. And when we see that endometrium in the middle mid of the cycle, we know that pregnancy is achieved in such type of endometrium. So endometrium, good endometrium, half of the problem is solved. When we that means we know that we'll be able to achieve pregnancy in such uterus, half of the problem is solved. The rest 50%, the success depends on the good embryo. I mean, to what I mean by to say good embryo, that is a grade A blastocyst. Blastocyst means the day five embryo, we call it as a blastocyst, and it should be on the grade A level. Such embryo will lead to pregnancy. Now, how do we get grade A embryo? What goes, I always say, what goes in will come out. If a good gamete goes in, good embryo comes out. So what is a gamete? Uh, means the egg and the sperm united together will give rise to embryo. So if we have a good egg, good sperm, which leads to a good A-grade embryo, then the pregnancy will, we will achieve at any cost by 100%. Yes, yes, very true, doctor. So uh, how, how do success rates so vary across different age groups? Is age a very important factor for IVF success? And also, does it uh, vary depending on uh, men and women? Yes, age, age in men and women, both it plays a factor, especially uh, female it is. Because what happens about 35, what I said, the good gamete is the one which leads to a good embryo. Now, what is a good embryo? What, it, what usually happens, the science behind the genetics behind formation of embryo, the egg has a 46 chromosome, sperm has a 46 chromosome, it will divide into equally into 23 of each. This 23 egg, 23 eggs unite together to form again a human genome that is the 46 XX or XY. This that equal division of an egg into 23 and 23 chromosome, equal division of a sperm into 23 and 23. That is the one which is leading to formation of an embryo. Now, what happens with the aged oocyte? The female is around 35. The egg dividing into equal half becomes at stake. It cannot divide. There is a chromosomal disjunction. It cannot divide into equal pair. So what happens? It will be 21 and 24. When that unites with a 23 uh, pair, uh, number of chromosomes of uh, sperm, that leads to, it doesn't lead to a human genome. It will not form 46XX or 46XY. So this is the reason why the pregnancy will uh, not re uh, happen in such cases. So age of the female is, that is why the age of the female is more important. It is not only age, obesity. We will not get a good quality sperm with obese men or obese female. We, the, all those factors uh, will add to the success of uh, IVF. So usually what we suggest, any couple going for IVF, three months we give the time prior to IVF to improve their lifestyle, uh, to improve the uh, means diet, exercise, and you know, all the partner involved together to make the overall well-being of the person before going for IVF. Okay. Uh, and, um... And also, uh, doctor, how do this lifestyle factors such as dietary choices, physical activity levels and stress, uh, how do these factors impact the chances of having a successful pregnancy through IVF? Are there any specific recommendations for patients in this regard? Uh, see, that's what I said. Before any couple going for IVF, we suggest to avoid totally the junk food, smoking, sedentary lifestyle and exercise. All this, what happens, it will produce certain hormones in the body which brings up to the wealthy, means the healthy gametes, healthy oocytes. So we have all ask them to avoid the total junk food, uh, shift back to homemade food, reduce on the fat, reduce on the uh, uh, saturated fats, all those things, saturated sugars, exercise, yoga, walking, all this will bring about a healthy womb and a healthy gametes. So these and obesity, reducing the obesity level, all this definitely has an impact on the success of the IVF. And we do give some time for the couples to come back. The IVF will never take an emergency basis. It is like planned. You have to do this to come back to for IVF. Okay. And throughout the IVF treatment process, the patients will be given various uh, multiple medications and they also undergo some of the minor medical procedures that may lead to a few of the side effects. What are these side effects and how do uh, patients manage them? 
most of the IVF medications are uh, safe. It is uh, not, the general public, they think it's uh, it, has, it leads to side effects. No, it doesn't lead to any life-threatening complications. Earlier, yes, some people used to have a hyperstimulation, what we call it as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, where there is excess follicle growing in IVF. They have difficulty in breathing, water log, difficulty in abdomen. There is a more of water retention. But with a better availability of drugs, this ovarian hyperstimulation is hardly one or two percent. It is well controlled, not very life threatening, and not many people will have it. And we can avoid all these things. So uh, actually, it's a myth that uh, it causes a life threatening. I mean, it is uh, it's, uh, the, these hormones have side effects or long term effects. No, it doesn't have any long term effects. Okay, okay, doctor, that's good to know actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of a study uh, from UK, it was found that uh, there there was a twenty nine percent chance for a live birth after one cycle, and it is forty three percent after six complete cycles. So uh, how many cycles of IVF are usually needed for a successful pregnancy and live birth? See, the world standard in IVF is uh, 40%. Whatever the best lab, they say in the books, they say it's 40%. But with the best lab available and better freezing technique of embryos, all these things, better technology available in the IVF lab, it is 60% in many of the labs, but it can go up to 70% also if provided it depends on the case of case basis. So uh, uh, the success rate, it not only matters with the, it's about the age of the couples, choice of the couple, how good we get the embryo, how good is the lab, how good is the lab air condition, all those things matters for the success of the IVF. And uh, uh, it is uh, means it's a myth that uh, means the uh, uh, whatever the chances of uh, IVF and all it only depends on uh, the baby matlab uh, what the patient say it means uh, it's about the drugs or the choice of life say it's not like that it is there are so many other factors also added to it it is the lab air condition as I said and the embryo quality everything okay. Okay. And also, doctor, if a couple is undergoing this IVF cycles for multiple times, are there any potential risks or side effects? Yeah, your question was uh, how many cycles, what is the success with how many cycles is recommended. See, what I say is it is not about how many cycles recommended. It is what is the indication for that IVF. Suppose the female is 35, we do first cycle of IVF and we didn't get a good quality egg. Now, how much ever, how many more cycles we do, it will be the same because we cannot revert back on the age of the female. Now, the age of the female is so, so high. That is, if it is around 37, 38, and we are not getting good quality oocytes, that will remain the same even if we do so three, four cycles. It is very, very difficult. We, we tend to change the protocol. We put a milder stimulation drug. We do mild stimulation still. The, uh, the success remains less because the gamete quality is, is lost because of the age of the couple. So in that case, multiple cycles is not recommended. We we try to change it. We, we try to change the protocol or we try to bring it the donor egg and how, see how good the pregnancy can be achieved in this gut. So it doesn't necessarily mean how many cycles. Why did the first cycle fail? The reason for the first cycle failure will be the indication for the second cycle. Okay. Okay, so uh, so it again depends on the uh, age factors. It also depends on the quality of the uh, mm. embryos, what mm. I'm saying. Mm. Okay, okay, doctor, I understand that. And also some of the couples think that if they undergo a lot of uh, uh, IVF cycle attempts, it might uh, lead to some side effects or some potential risks. No, 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 no. no. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, it's a myth that it leads to ovarian cancer in a postmenopausal age. All these things is myth and it has been proved beyond doubt the drug doesn't have to have a long-term effects so okay. they can relax on that so and also during the IVF treatment uh, especially uh, uh, for uh, the patient uh, there are a lot of uh, hormonal uh, uh, medications given so will this affect their mood and yes. uh, will they have mood yes. swings yes the mood swings even otherwise also will happen for female in the natural menstrual cycle 
just premenstrual day mood swings do happen so whenever there is a rather than ivf when we are uh, uh, preparing the endometrium for embryo transfer when you are using more of progesterone and all the mood swings definitely happen with those injection hormonal yes it does happen for few people not for everyone it again depends on the mental status of the female not that everyone will have undergo the mood swings but it is a short term when she is under stimulation and drug it's, it is under short term only they, they and very few people only have this Okay. And also, doctor, uh, whenever the couple come for IVF treatment, they would have already tried various modes of treatment, right? So most of them would already become uh, very depressed and they would have lost hopes. So for such couples, the, uh, do you think they need a kind of uh, counseling uh, for... Yes, yes. Actually, them out of actually yeah. see, the crust of the treatment of IVF, why the IVF, it is not the treatment. The technology is very simple. Anybody, even the 50 years female also can conceive. The technology is so good now. Anybody can have a child by whatever mode in IVF. That is the technology. But the problem in IVF is to deal with the emotion of the couple it is the emo it is the emotionally it is uh, it is taking the couple down so whoever is the IVF specialist not only it's a team effort it is the counselor it's a doctor see we need to address sometimes it failures IVF repeated IVF failures they'll be emotionally drowned and he, it is we have to give a sufficient adequate time for the couples it, it takes really a lot of uh, time both from the uh, patient side and from the doctor side it, it is emotionally downed and yes, so that's why what we do actually whoever Whoever gets IVF positive, we don't talk. But if at all some couple is not able to achieve pregnancy, we immediately attend. We give a fix, uh, means we uh, fix the appointment immediately, call them, call them for conversation. We counsel them what may be the reason for the failure. So it, it becomes very important to deal with the emotions of the couple rather than the success of the IVF. So that, as I said, anybody can have the child. It is not that you see, it's, they have to choose an alternate method. Suppose the egg quality is not good, then they have to be willing to accept that they have there is a, some they call donor egg where they can achieve the better pregnancy rate but for that acceptance take some time for the couple down the lane they take some time for the accept for any human to accept certain things they take some time so during that emotional period they need actual proper support from both the doctor and the team and the counselor everybody yeah uh, rightly said, doctor. And also, uh, in many cases, we have seen that after multiple attempts, when the success rates are uh, low, and if a patient, uh, if a couple did not succeed in conceiving, then uh, they give up. So, what is your suggestion for such uh, couples? See, some people, as I said, some people we won't be able to achieve pregnancy. See, that is acceptance. See, suppose egg quality is not good, change for donor egg. Sperm quality is not good change for donor sperm other couple willing if they are willing okay what is the next sometimes what happens the uterus is not good there is a severe adenomyosis i'm not able to get a good endometrium where i cannot do the transfer how good i can improve the endometrium sometimes they, however whatever method we do we will not be able to get a good endometrium and the implantation is not happening in their uterus so are they willing for surrogacy if they are not willing for surrogacy, what is next? So as I said, whether you accept this, whether you don't accept this, there are couples who don't accept for a donor, uh, third-party reproduction. There are couples who don't accept for surrogacy. Then what is the options available for these couples? So, so adoption is a wonderful option. There is an option, but see, that's what I said. What you want, what you can accept, what you cannot accept, it all depends on the couples. But there are definitely modes in IVF and there are definitely the modes with the government also, with the society also. Whichever way you uh, you accept. Or there are couples who try to remain like that. They are okay. They are okay without having children. So we have to respect their uh, decision and go accordingly. Okay. And also one of the very important factor for couples to give up is also the cost that is involved in IVF treatment, right? Yeah. So that, that is a major factor, doctor, because uh, we all know that when compared to other modes of treatment, IVF is very costly. Yeah. And for multiple cycles, many couples would not be affordable. Yeah. So uh, what, what is your take on this aspect, doctor? See, why is the IVF so costly? Why is that it is a costly affair? 
that is what we have to understand in this it is not it is not simply a, a costly it is some factors involved in it for that why is it costly see first is the injections most of the drugs it comes from us they have a plant it is most of them is good drugs where it is they are taking a, a stringent condition for it to grow and there is a cost involved in the drugs so it has been imported and that, that is a cost which is in, uh, involved in that and the media the media where the embryo grows most of it that is also imported it comes most of them it is coming from outside and there is a cost involved in that and in the lab the lab needs a strict stringent air condition which is whether there is a case or not it should learn uh, run the lab air condition the ph the everything volatile compounds uh, 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 vocs what we say is the dust particles nothing should enter the lab it should be in the stringent yeah. condition 24 bar 7 all the 365 days so there is a cost involved in all those things mm -hmm. so that makes the ivf cost uh, means whatever said and done it is going to go up unless the government comes in and gives subsidy for the drugs and subsidy for the equipments what we install there all the equipments which which is not made in india it is coming imported so when that comes or when there is some government schemes then the cost of the ivf will reduce till then it is the same so many not many couples are uh, affordable for multiple cycles but there are some financial uh, types with ivf centers where they can pay in the emi options and all where the couples are both the couples are working where they can afford to means uh, spend in the emi option when they can do those things can be taken up okay and also uh, there is one more uh, uh, in concern that most of the couples have that this is not con covered under medical insurance and more no, recently, no, 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 no. Many of the corporate insurance are coming up where we are also doing their allocated one lakh, two lakh budget. Many of the corporate and uh, IT companies they have included IVF in the insurance. It is there, okay. but not the regular health insurance. Yeah. Yes. Yes, doctor. That that's also a very uh, important. But it, it is going to factor. come. It's yeah. going to yeah. come because yeah. so much of fertility yeah. on the infertility is on search. Many of the health insurance is going to come up with that. Yeah, but then if that happens, it's a very good news for uh, many couples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Correct, so yeah. they can go for multiple attempts. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. multiple attempts also, that is like a yearly basis. This year, one attempt, next year, it is not at. So they yeah. also have a time limit of that. They will come with a time limit. Okay, doctor. Okay. So uh, now I would like to uh, ask some uh, a different question related to children. So we all know that several million children have been born through IVF treatment, but there's limited data that exists regarding their health and development beyond the first year of uh, life. So what are the long-term uh, health effects for uh, children who are born through IVF? Are there any known health risks or uh, advantages? Many, many, many studies, thousands of studies have been done regarding the health uh, or the genetic thing, congenital abnormalities, or the babies have been followed up with in their early teens, 15, 20 years, and how is these babies are doing. They have absolutely ruled out any associated congenital anomaly. It is in par with the normal conception. They were think, uh, They have looked into the epigenetic changes. That is the epigenetic changes. What do I mean by that? When the embryo is grown in the lab because of the stress of the uh, growing condition in the lab, whether the embryo is in stress and that uh, stress, uh, growing stress in the early five days of that embryo growth, whether that is leading to any hyperactive, hyperkinetic disorder or whether that is leading to any uh, chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, those things, everything has been studied. And most of them have come with a negative report. It doesn't, it does not have any role of that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, there are also many other uh, myths which are related to IVF. So I, I want uh, this to be confirmed by you, doctor, so that our audience are very clear uh, which are myths and which are the facts. So okay. uh, let's discuss some of them. Uh, people often think that multiple pregnancies are more common in those who are undergoing IVF treatment in those who are naturally conceiving. Is this true? 
true true the multiple chances of uh, multiple pregnancy chances are little higher on the couples because we tend to transfer two embryos two blastocysts if it is day three we were transferring three embryos to increase the chance of conception when the endometrium is very good and the embryo is very good the two embryo also conceives sometimes we uh, transfer hatching blastocysts when the embryo is breaking open and coming out from its shell when we transfer that it tends to auto divide into two even though if you have transferred single embryo also it can auto divide and form identical twins so that chances is also more so ivf chance ivf pregnancy is around 20 uh, ivf pregnancy leading to multiple pregnancies around 20 percent and it's true it's not a myth okay <laughs> thanks for confirming doctor okay. so when uh, when expecting twins or triplets there is a belief that both babies may not be healthy if carried to uh, term together and many people opt for selective abortion so what do you uh, uh, suggest on this doctor no 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 it's not that both the babies are not healthy it is not like that it can be healthy it cannot be healthy also it depends on how the embryo means how the growth of that genetic material of that embryo but what happens is sometimes there is triplets the human uh, womb is not uh, designed to carry three pregnancy it can carry maximum two pregnancy three pregnancy it cannot mm -hmm. be carried so what do we do we do a selective reduction of one of the fetus which is not so good or which is not appearing good or if all the three are appearing good one of them we try to sacrifice by doing selective fetal reduction so that the uh, pregnancy at least the twin pregnancy carries forward or one sometimes couple says we don't want twin pregnancy we want single term pregnancy so that time they go off, they go for voluntary for one cell, a reduction of one single embryo. The problem with uh, multiple twin pregnancy is this is as it, it is a over distended uterus so mm -hmm. there is a risk of preterm labor so we it leads up extra procedure like putting a cervical in class repeated uh, pregnancy visits mm -hmm. to see that the pregnancy goes forward they don't land up in preterm labor or uh, premature rupture of membranes all these things are the added uh, associated risk with the twin pregnancies this has okay. to be addressed okay the nice you Dynasty, when they land, when the baby has a preterm baby, then the risk of additional financial burden on the couple mm -hmm. to manage the babies in the NICU. Those things. Mm -hmm. are... Yeah, yeah, rightly said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how, how can you address the misconceptions like IVF always results in birth defects and IVF results in test tube babies? Who are, uh, these babies are quite different from the naturally born babies. Uh, mm -hmm. These kind of myths and uh, people have these misconceptions. No, uh, see, uh, multi, there's thousands and thousands of babies born every day through IVF. So there is, a, and most of them, they have studied, as I said to you, they have followed it to up to their 20s, 30s, 40s, and they have found that there is no associated any abnormalities congenital it is in part it means the normal people has a 0.3 percent of having a congenital abnormal baby the normal population i mean who have conceived a couple conceived by natural method and they are ivf also they have the same risk it, the risk is same as the natural conception on also so there is no associated risk or increased risk with ivf conception that that can be taken out of the head completely okay okay and also, like you already said, that at any age, even at age of 50, we, uh, uh, women can opt to have a baby through IVF. So uh, and at that time, if any um, uh, couple is planning to have baby, uh, do, don't you think the uh, 50 age is a menopause phase? Uh, don't you think that is going to affect the IVF treatment? No, it is not like that. See, we have seen um, uh, menopause patients attending menopause even at 35. With, uh, we have seen early menopause uh, because of this early menarche and all, early menopause, even at 40, 45 also, the menstruation would have stopped. So we, what do we do? We, give, we make the uterus to come into the cycle of menstrual cycle. We give medicines, certain hormone drugs, so that first she uh, enters into the menstrual phases where the menopause has stopped. We try to menstruate her for the six months, improve the blood flow, improve the endometrium. We try to bring the uterus back into normal and then plan to transfer. Uh, 50 years, what I mean to say is that what the Indian law says is the combined age of the couple should be less than 100 before they go for either. This is the law for whom we can do IVF. So, okay. so when when in there they are they are fifties and uh, when they have attended more challenging is not the menopause uh, when some menstruation stuff that can be resumed at any way with the drugs. But uh, this couple they have associated cardiac 
problem. They will have associated diabetes, hypertension, where the pregnancy to continue for nine months, which becomes at risk. There is a risk of health of the female also. So those things, the medical disorders in the pregnancy will be a more major challenge rather than preparing the uterus for uh, embryo transfer. Okay. And also, according to one of the medical survey, about 15 out of 100 couples from the IT sector face this infertility issue. And 40% of such cases are related to male infertility. Is there any relationship between working extensively on the uh, laptops or the systems? Yes. And this has an increased risk of infertility among uh, men and women. Yes, yes. It is the three things which play um, rather sedentary, the radiation effects of the laptop, keeping the laptop for a prolonged hour on the lap and working, which affects the sperm quality because there is a heat generation with the laptop which is transferring to the testis and affecting the sperm quality. And uh, uh, smoking. The IT company, sedentary habits, them. we see a lot of smokers in the IT group. All this affects obesity. All this affects the junk food the, because of sedentary. They take a break before we have some fast food and come sit for long hours in front of laptop. The, the proper healthy lifestyle itself is altered. So all this does add for uh, IT couples with for more of uh, infertility. And one of the major factors is the stress. Stress, stress. Yes, stress. yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, what, what would be your advice for uh, the people working in IT sector uh, to handle stress in order to avoid infertility issues? First and foremost, uh, the uh, pattern uh, should change in our lifestyle, daily habits and the diet. However busy, so however, what means when I counsel the couples to go for yoga, the first thing they say is we don't have time. You have to make time so for yourself. You have to exercise, like how we eat, how we sleep. Exercise should be your routine. You have to do some diet or some exercises which keep you fit. And then avoid on the junk food. Try to bring home food, homemade food or healthy food where you can avoid all the fast food like the burger, pizza, where there is more of cheese. The cheese will increase the estrogen in the men. The, when the estrogen keeps increasing in the men, they'll have decreased sperm production. So we try to, why do we say avoid burger pizza? Because it has a cheese in it. The cheese has estrogen content. The estrogen is a female hormone. It is not a male hormone. So it brings out the sperm quality. Smoking. Smoking is one which causes vasoconstriction. When you smoke, there is nicotine in it. The nicotine has a bad effect on the sperm, uh, sperm quality and morphology. It is going, when it is doing so much of harm for the uh, heart, it is going to affect the sperm also. It is going to affect uh, damage the sperm quality. So we try to uh, we give some time, three four months. We'll ask them to use nicotine patch or use nicotine bubble gum. Try to try to cut down on smoking. They have to really work for it. We have seen so many people smoking twenty per day. So imagine the health of that uh, uh, male partner. So we we have to work on these issues, and then take them for IV. Okay. Okay, doctor. So you you already mentioned that diet plays a very important role uh, in case of uh, infertility issues. That is, uh, people uh, like uh, especially women uh, who are who are obese and uh, who uh, who have issues like PCOD, they have to reduce their weight. So uh, they will be given uh, with a uh, diet and they need to follow it. Uh, it is it is very well understood, but. Uh, couples who are undergoing uh, treatment, who are already advised with IVF, and uh, if uh, if a woman is uh, uh, undergoing these IVF cycles, uh, are there any specific diet advices uh, for uh, uh, these uh, women under treatment? See, uh, what is the reason for obesity? If the polycystic ovaries is the reason for obesity, she is having polycystic ovaries, and that uh, polycystic ovaries, they'll be some. Most of them will be obese. Not that all they will be obese. They are lean PCOS also, but obesity is a major thing in PCOS. So we ask them to uh, cut down on the fats, and uh, what we say is uh, switch back to uh, uh, natural foods. We see, usually say five servings of fruits per day. We advise for five servings of food per day for both the couples. And uh, cut down on rice, whatever is white, milk, sugar, cut down on those things. Uh, so, and uh, saturated fats, cut down on sugars. 
some couples they take these things very seriously they lose 20 25 kgs with diet and yoga alone prior to ivf it is the motivation which is required for the from the couple side to lose it so most of them will not be motivated to lose weight but when they are desperate to have the kid or some motivation is that they will lose weight they have lost weight and they come back but there is something called as morbid obesity where the couple is around more than 110 means the female is on 110 or the men is 110 120 kgs so for that uh, we have uh, surgeries where uh, we will do a surgery bypass surgery gastric bypass and we reduce the weight surgical way and then get them for ivf now why do we say the weight reduction has to be done uh, in ivf because one is the implantation will not happen the uterus blood flow has to be good for that blood flow has to be good they have to keep themselves fit a regular exercise it improves body per circulation and then it as well as increase the circulation of the uterus the gamete quality will uh, increase so these things we have to address uh, to the couple okay and also is it true doctor that uh, girls who experience the late puberty uh, which occurs after the age of 15 or 16 they have uh, reduced fertility chances compared to those who undergo puberty at an earlier age it is true how it how does it work see every female are distinct to release certain number of eggs in her entire reproductive age so she has come with early prefixed there is free fixed amount it is when she is in her mother's womb only this is the number of eggs she is going to release in her reproductive age it is fixed it is fixed for everybody so it is some people are fixed for 5 10 years some people it is fixed for 20 years 15 years so earlier they begin when see when they start menstruating at earlier at the age of 13 they are going to finish it earlier you get my point when they start early menstruation yes. the eggs gets exhausted early when the yeah. menstruation starts late they extend to remain for few more years this we have seen in our clinical experience also couples uh, now we see puberty at age of 9 years 10 years girls menstruating because of the dietary again because a lot of yeah. children, they they like pizza burger again estrogen hormones it is indirectly you take consuming hormones you land up in having early puberty so these each these are the child, children's future they when they come to us at 30 20 i've seen 23 25 also i've seen one girl at 18 one girl we have seen at 13 years she has attained menopause one first cycle she has attained menarche next cycle she has attained menopause 18 year girl attained menopause so all this uh, means they have a very 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 short duration of uh, fertility so uh, we cannot say which couple which uh, woman is going to have this problem but early menarche does uh, lead to early exhaustion of eggs okay okay doctor and is it possible for the couples who have conceived their first child through ivf or uh, they will be able to conceive uh, the second child in a natural way or again possible, they have to go possible the possible depending on what the reason is see if mm-hmm. stress some people are so stressed out two years three years five years i have not conceived i should conceive conceive so what happens that stress itself is not allowing them to conceive so for that they go for ivf with uh, means maybe there may be not valid indication but because they, they we don't know the reason why they have uh, not conceived so first mm-hmm. cycle they'll uh, conceive and the second uh, cycle there is no stress already they have a one kid so there's no stress so there is every possibility that they can conceive naturally but if there is any severe male factor that is count is so low there is no there is no chance that they will conceive second time naturally it is not uh, so easy to conceive or if there is also egg reserve is very low some other thing is where it is going the factor is remaining is going to remain the same in the next cycle also will not be able to conceive second cycle naturally so what was the reason for our first ivf if there is a stress long duration marriage and not known the reason for our infertility that was the indication for ivf then this probably there is every probability that second ivf they can conceive naturally okay and in recent times uh, the concept of egg freezing is gaining uh, increasing attention so could you please explain the process of egg freezing and what is the significance in preserving women's uh, fertility how does it relate to the process of uh, in vitro fertilization most of the women is career oriented 
she doesn't want to I means the, the partner she wants to choose at the at her will she wants to marry at her I means at her will she wants to first settle down in her career so most of them they plan their marriage only at 35 and they they will have other commitments the loans they want to settle in such a way or they want to bring the kid only after they do such thing thing they want the home to be ready they want the car to be. there are so many other their priorities priorities in the life they this will be their last priority so they want to plan the pregnancy above 40 above 40 we cannot take their eggs at all because there will be risk of downs and all so that what uh, the egg freezing what they do they go multiple cycles of stimulation and they freeze their eggs in their before their when in their early 30s and when they plan their pregnancy at 40 where they can we cannot take their uh, eggs or there is no eggs at all at the age of 40 this egg freezing will come into picture and there is increasing number of uh, demand for this expressing so increasing number of inquiries uh, requirements more fe females are open for these options yes doctor right you said <laughs> the field of assisted reproductive technologies has witnessed many new developments over the last uh, almost 10 years now what are the recent advancements in ivf technology that have improved the success rates see now why will there be an ivf failure maybe the embryo is not good maybe the endometrium is not good so what we say what do i mean by embryo not good embryo may be looking very good there are two things physically looking good genetically good even the physically looking good can be genetically abnormal so the genetic testing of the embryo Earlier, they used to take a biopsy of few cells of the embryo and send it for testing whether there is any genetic abnormality in the embryo before in couples who have got repeated failures of IVF. We do PGD and see whether the embryo is abnormal genetically. So there we used to take a biopsy and then send it and refreeze the embryo and send see what is the thing. Now, without touching the embryo, without uh, even touching the embryo, the media where the embryo is grown that the embryo releases some metabolites into the media. Using that metabolite products alone, without touching the embryo, we can say whether this embryo is genetically normal or non normal. We call it as non-invasive PGD, without touching the embryo. So that is the recent one. And now the embryo, endometrium, coming to endometrium. Why there is not pregnancy happening even in spite of being such a good endometrium? So there is something called as endometrial receptive assay. Means whether this endometrium is receptive. If receptive, when to transfer this embryo? Each couple, each female comes in a regular period window of implantation, which is different for everybody. So your window of implantation is somewhere in the four, uh, 12th or 13th day. Somebody sees in the 15th or 16th day. So where do you fall? Whether we are transferring the embryo early or whether we are transferring the embryo late, when we have to transfer, exact time of transfer of the embryo into that room, we call it as customized embryo transfer time. So this is the recent advances in the recent years, which has given a good success rate for IVF. Okay. That's good to know, doctor. Thank you for that uh, elaborated answer. And uh, finally, uh, uh, you already mentioned, Doctor, that uh, uh, mental health plays a very important role. So you always go for counseling uh, for the couples who come for IVF treatment. So uh, you would have uh, treated so many couples by now in all these uh, two decades. So how is that uh, the mental health has impacted over all these uh, success rates of IVF? procedure see the there is a study many studies have proved this see how the human mind thinks the human womb also thinks the same thing if the female thinks if she has a negative things a lot of negative things in her mind whether i'll be conceiving or she previous failed i won't be able to conceive probably i will not conceive the womb also thinks the similar way this has been proved you think negatively, your womb also thinks negatively. You take the positive vibes, you attract the positive vibes, womb also attracts the positive vibes. This has been put. So mental health plays a very, very crucial role, especially for females. So we try to uh, bring into how to think positively, how, how, how better we can think positively by including yoga, diet, exercise, all this releases endorphins in the body. Endorphin is a well-being of human well-being hormone. Like it is like a morphine. The natural morphine in humans is endorphin. That only releases only when you exercise and you do yoga. And that will give you the sense of well-being. How the drugs uh, morphine gives the sense of well-being. The human body also releases more endorphin, which gives a sense of well-being. That will be only released through exercise. 
so even you would have experienced the day you go walking you feel fresh that yes. is because of these endorphins so this is how uh, the mental health is a, a major thing for the success of india okay rightly said doctor that is why we also have included in our uh, packages all mm -hmm. these uh, sessions counseling sessions uh, of psych sessions antenatal counseling sessions uh, for people undergoing ivf treatment the guidance on diet consultations and diet plans and the activities like you said all the yoga then fitness sessions all this is included in our package and that is how uh, we are providing our support uh, to the patients Who are it is that is what IVF is not a single person. It is a holistic approach, multiple approach. It is not by one approach. It is holistic approach only. You'll be able to get the success in IVF. Thank you very much, Doctor. Now I would request Doctor Isha, our marketing and communications leader, to conduct the Q and A session. <clears throat> thanks, Doctor Jamuna and Doctor Rashmi. Thanks a lot. It's been quite an insightful session, and uh, uh, I got to know many aspects. You know where IVF uh, requires that kind of patient education, and the way you explain. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you taking out that time. So yeah. now there are few questions that the audience has raised. Few are somewhat valid, and you were talking about a point where we are career-oriented women, and you know the time and the priorities are there. There is one question that has come down: is how long generally does an ivf procedure is expected to take from the start to the conceiving is there some timeline or time frame that a customer that a patient can expect in that procedure see as i said we usually start the injection on the day 2 of the menstrual cycle of the female and the injections what we give is it for about 10 to 12 days from the day 2 so they are from day 2 to 12 days that is approximately 14th day of her cycle Yeah. Once the embryos, most of the eggs are eighteen to twenty mm. We give the trigger thirty six hours after the trigger. That is on the sixteenth day. We collect all the ovaries. If the trigger is on the fourteenth day, we collect it on sixteenth day. If the trigger is on the thirteenth day, we collect it on the fifteenth day. That is thirty six hours after the last injection. So max to max, it will not cross sixteen days because we cannot stimulate more than twelve to thirteen days. We have to end it by that. And uh, we'll finish it off by first half of the cycle, fifteen to sixteen uh, days. Now, what do we do? Earlier we used to do fresh embryo transfer. That is same cycle after a week we used to transfer it. But the success of this uh, fresh embryo transfer were low. So what we you do? We because the, there are more hormones in the body when we are under when the female is under stimulation. So we were not able to achieve a pregnancy. So what we do? We wait that hormones to come down by giving oral contraceptive pills and everything. We bring that hormone level down, which takes about another one month more. So suppose if we do it in the September pickup, so transfer will usually happen in the November pickup, November cycle. So yeah, September cycle if we do the mm -hmm. we we collect the oocyte keep it freeze it and we wait for one month that is in the october for the, all the hormones to come down and november we prepare the endometrium for transfer the endometrial preparation again takes 15 to 16 days once there is a nice triple line endometrium then we do the transfer on the 20th day once if she is ready on the 12th day 6 days from that we will transfer so most of it will be done by 18 to 20th day so first half of the cycle in the one cycle alternate that is if it is in september if the pickup happens november the transfer happens in between break is in the october okay okay so that for this uh, with this answer there another question that pops on is that during this period can a person carry on with their daily life processes and their daily uh, you know work that, and they don't require to be you know in the house or in the hospital does that does that happen? create any hindrance in yes, their day yes yes she can do the uh, routine work uh, if in the normal responders if the, they can do the routine work but few people especially this polycystic ovaries where there is a risk of hyperstimulation the ovary cycles increases by three times four times there is a risk of torsion of the ovary when there is more eggs growing there is a risk of torsion so we avoid we tell them to avoid strenuous activity uh, bending and lifting weight or having intercourse all this we tell to avoid for a hyper responder that is what i mean to say is a polycystic ovary otherwise otherwise we tell them to be on their routine work okay okay so doctor there is there's one question that is there that a person who is undergoing ivf is there any alternate uh, treatment or therapy that they can do to make sure that 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 particular uh, 
uh, process is uh, 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 has the success rate is there anything alternatively that they can do during that period or they have they should put their complete focus to the process that they are doing no during stimulation there is nothing alternate we usually give uh, diet and we give certain medication to improve the air quality but whatever has to be done it has to be done before stimulation we give some time gap before taking the couple for ivf 3 months 4 months that is the period they have to work on their body they have to work on their uh, uh, mental health uh, uh, control their emotions all those things positive vibe or diet exercise all those things will happen in that pre ivf period Once the IVF stimulation starts, it is ten just a ten twelve days period by five days. But we will try. We will tell them to continue the same diet and the exercise. Okay, okay, doctor. And just last, this is a personal question from my end. That there are couples. When should a couple consider IVF? You know that they have that question. They will conceive. They will conceive, and you know they they start losing the time. So is there, you know, something as as a, you know, the two cents or you know, tip before we go that you would like to share with the audience that what is the right time they should consider IVF as an option? See, yeah, IVF as an option. See, what does why when do we say infertile infertile couple? When we when the couple everything is normal and they have been trying from one year, unprotected intercourse, one year they have been trying, still they are not able to uh, have a child. Then we say it as infertile couple. now when such if it, it this is not the same for everybody if the female is already 35 that one year time gap will fall down to 6 months it is not the time for same now when to consider ivf there are certain irreversible factor already she is 37 35 there are no eggs when we do a second egg scan there are hardly one or two eggs normally each ovary i expect around 6 to 8 follicles on each ovary on the baseline scale on the second or third day of appearance that that we call it as a normal result when the egg number is very low hardly one or two eggs already she is 37 time is going out we are losing those eggs also so such couple there is no point in waiting we will suggest them directly ivf count severe male factor now the sperm count is uh, usually the who says is 15 million per ml if the count is very low 5 million 6 million there is no chance that they can conceive naturally so there is no time limit If at all they have to conceive, it is only IVF. There is no time limit. You can try IUI, then you can come to IVF. No, it is only straight away IVF. And that is sperm or severe male abnormal sperms. There is hardly one percent, two percent small. Normally, WHO standard is the sperm quality should be the morphology should be three to four percent. If it is hardly there is one percent, two percent, they are not going to conceive. Especially one percent, they are not going to conceive by natural method or even for IUI for that matter. They are for IVF. So, or tubal damage. The female has some infection. There is tuberculosis. Tube is already damaged. The tube is required for the natural conception for the egg to come into there to, to form the embryo. When the tube is only not for performing its function, how much ever years they wait, they are not going to conceive naturally. Or IVF. So IVF is the indication. So there is no time limit for IVF. There are some irreversible factor, uncorrectable factors where IVF is only option. But some there are some factors where there is correctable. If there is a borderline sperm, it is only twelve million. Where we can bring it up to fifteen million. Try some IUI three four cycle. If there three four cycle of IUI is not working, severe PCO, so much of drugs input, their egg is not growing. Then IVF. If if it's growing and pregnancy is not several cycle of ovulation induction, so many IUIs three four cycle. no results or prolonged marriage so, uh, all those things when we try to correct for 6 months 8 months still not happening then ivf is indicated so there are some correctable factors where you wait for 6 months to 1 year there's non correctable factor where how much ever wait you, however long you wait there's no uh, natural conception happening therefore that's right away for ivf no time limit for waiting no need to wait agreed agreed dr rashmi so so thanks a lot thanks a lot for all this information and i understand whenever a couple is planning you know trying to start a family it's always advisable to go for a gynecologist check up and consider all the options so thanks for that and over to you doctor i would suggest rather than going to a gynecologist some people lose time by going to a regular gynecologist it has to be a fertility specialist you get a right yeah. guidance only by going to a fertility specialist where exactly you stand thanks for highlighting that doctor thanks a lot <laughs> Thank you very much. Dr. Thanks, Dr. It was nice talking to you. Same here. Thank you, Dr. Jamuna. So yeah, uh, thanks, Dr. Isha, for coordinating. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi, for providing uh, such valuable insights into the world of uh, in vitro fertilization. 
and its impact on family building journeys. I am confident that today's audience has gained essential knowledge about IVF procedures, myths, facts, and related to it, allowing them to maximize the chances of a successful outcome and a healthy pregnancy. So uh, dear viewers, to avail the benefits of our care plans and diet plans along with the care coordination services, please download your book app, uh, which is available in Play Store. We have introduced uh, care plans and diet plans for infertility in your book app, especially for those patients so who underwent IUI and IVF. We will be very happy to serve you and your healthcare needs. Kindly contact us for subscriptions and any further queries. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi, and thank you all for joining today's session. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.